episode of Serial. Like every month, I'll go through the pictures of, I've taken or edited in the months before. Um, and let's start directly with some film. Um, I'm currently testing the Olympus XA3 camera. It's a small point-and-shoot camera from the 1980s. Um, yeah, it's not a rangefinder. It's uh, you basically define. It's not very precise in terms of defining the distance, but it's a manual um, sort of to the feeling focusing experience. And here it's with an, a film photograph, film photography project, um, Retrochrome 400 uh, Dia film, which um, has been developed in a cross treatment 2C41 instead of the E6 which is harder and harder to, to get to. Um, that's Hyde Park in London. Um, I really like the grain of this film, even so it's kind of, the colors are kind of weird, but I do like them too. I think there's a really strong um, feeling coming out of the warmth um, and, yeah, and also the colors of the plants. So obviously the vegetation helps with the blue of the sky, the contrast. And interesting camera. I'm, I'm not yet really sure about it, but... The combination is pretty good. Here again, on the left, that's Hyde Park, same equipment, two runners. Um, or when the lights are a little bit different with some more cloudy and not as much sun, you definitely go with this film, you go into the blues, the magentas. I do do so, I do some color balancing uh, after digitalization, but basically the film is suddenly very sensitive to different uh, color balances, natural color balances. Um, here again, um, two pictures with the same equipment. That's in Iceland. The picture on the left, that's this goal uh, near the Atlantic Ocean and the west neighborhoods of Reykjavik. Uh, we'll see it more than once uh, on this month, but um, I kind of like that scene and I've repeatedly taken a picture of it, so we'll see later if there's a surprise. And by night also with um, such a film, even so it's a 400 ISO by really dark night situation. In really dark night situations, well, obviously the exposure time is pretty long, but I kind of like the swing, the feeling of it, even so it's not very, it's kind of blurry. Um, also here too, same equipment, uh, always west neighborhoods of Reykjavik with different cloud settings. And the colors, as you can see, again, very sensitive to the color balance created by the natural light. That's Vestgerber, Lower Log, the, the neighborhood. Um, I kind of like the results. Uh, still continuing with the same camera, not same film. One film I really like is the old Ford Pan F50, um, still with the Olympus XA3. So snow in Reykjavik. Um, different light settings. I kind of like the results from this camera. I'm not sure I like, I really enjoy it yet using it. I think like every camera, it needs some practice and some are for you, some are not. I do like the XA, the ranch finder one, because I know where I focus here. I'm kind of not sure. Um, as we can see on the picture on the left, I'm not sure if that's uh, me moving because of a slow exposure or a long exposure, or if it's, um, or it's simply I forgot to focus with this weird system which you don't really have feedback for. Um, but nonetheless, I kind of like that snow mound. Um, and uh, on the right, that's again the snow in the west uh, neighborhood of Reykjavik uh, with this parking with this box uh, with no roof and the snow entering. Uh, again, same equipment, low light situations, two different uh, kind of settings, one outside with the snow on this tennis court or on the right, this uh, light inside an alley uh, in a building in the center of Reykjavik. This photo I already took a few months or maybe years back in one of my videos, we've seen it. It's a, it's a, it's a window which I kind of like and it's a wooden, Staircase behind, I find it interesting. I don't know why. Uh, here again, same equipment. We find that goal <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Um, I thought it was interesting with the rendering uh, of the film with the snow. Same thing for this road on, on the right. That's uh, the mountains, the volcanoes in Reykjavik, the Atlantic Ocean in the middle. And yeah, I like I like the feel. Um, same equipment, low lights. I've been also trying this camera with. Uh, 
Um, this range of cameras, a series of cameras, XA, XA1, 2, 3, 4, they have flash modules, and that's the most um, powerful flash module, which is A16. And I was trying it in during a, a club night, and I liked the rendering of it. It's very 1980s, and I think the fashion is also coming back. So kind of feel like an old school picture that I would have taken out from my archives, but it's not. It's recent. It's from last month. Uh, let's go to something completely different. That's basically with my SL... Oh, sorry, that's my M8, Leica M8. It's not a full-frame sensor, so putting on it a uh, Perrard 21mm MS Optics f4.5 lens, which is a f basically a flat lens. It's a cap lens with the, the range finder coupling for Leica M-compatible cameras. It was very interesting because basically it's not a 21 millimeter anymore, obviously, because, I mean, the the widths of the, the um, what you're taking, because the sensor is not that big, but it kind of fits pretty well. I like the rendering of the colors. I like the geometry, um, the sensor. Obviously, I old, I've always liked the M8 uh, for its rendering. Some hate it, some like it. Here again, to pictures taken with the same equipment that's um the neighborhoods of Reykjavik um I like I like the rendering with this lens and it's interesting on the Leica M8 I really think it's a good pair um here again in low light we for those who know the Leica M8 or who've seen my previous videos about it it's one of my favorite cameras in very low light you have this weird digital grain it's not very good with higher ISOs and when I mean higher ISOs it's going beyond well 320 ISO 640 ISO it's terrible at low light in some ways but I really like it and it's a good combination in my opinion on the left that's uh, the Vesterbear Lower Log the the Bast in the west neighborhood of Reykjavik uh, I really like the the colors coming out of it um, here same lens but that's on a full frame with the like SL2 um, I think it's an inter interesting combination but here you we basically have the field of view of a 21 millimeter now, but we have um, basically this loss of luminosity in the in the periphery. Um, you can't have everything with that kind of lens. It's already a, it's a really interesting lens. Um, you, I'll be doing a video about it, but uh, you can go check online if you're interested. It's made in Japan. It's kind of a boutique lens, very very flat um, and really nice to use. I'm I'm really enjoying using it. It's kind of a weird. Um, user experience but that's what you can have um, basically on the left you have the two churches main churches well the most iconic churches in Reykjavik um, with the Hallgrimskirka in the back on the picture on the left or a simple uh, one image uh, from the I think it's still the central neighborhood of Reykjavik 101 uh, on the right um, here, same camera, the SL2, but using the the Leica, the, well, the, there's the Apo Telit R3.4, the 180mm lens, um, incredible lens. I've been using it quite a lot. It's very precise. I think originally developed for the military. Um, but here, during a stormy night in the old harbor of Reykjavik, I thought it was really interesting. I like the kind of flare it gets. And yeah interesting rendering and, and same lens here black and white that's uh when you don't like the situation the color situations of concerts um, that was a an upcoming group um playing uh during an, a, an evening where you had many groups in the opera of uh, Reykjavik in Harpa um and yeah works great in black and white too it really you really get the characteristics the bouquet the, the precision of that lens comes out pretty well um, here, complete change of camera. We're going to a sub miniature camera, which is maybe some of you know it. It's kind of an, an, a new foe, an unknown uh, photographing object, um, the DX01. It was basically meant as a module for your smartphone with a really good Sony sensor and a really good optical formula. Um, but it can work uh, by itself. It's got a, this weird OLED black and white only black or white screen, which lets you kind of frame the picture, but not much more, um, but works great. And the results are kind of interesting. I've learned how to enjoy it through the years. It's not 
my one of my favorite cameras it's definitely very tiny nobody knows it's a camera when you get it out and you still can frame so interesting result only two here maybe not that interesting but i kind of liked it um let's go back to film that's with the uh, minolta cle it's an m mount uh, compatible camera probably the most precise i've done a separate video about it so if you're curious about it that's definitely a camera that kind of never messes up your exposition uh, it's kind of magical and here it's just an old Leica summer it's 50 millimeter f 1.5 lens and cine still 400d film so you get all kinds of blow, glow and blurry effects and bokeh and i think the combination is really great and that's uh, again the same place with this goal uh, on the west uh, neighbor in the west neighborhoods of Reykjavik and the sea and the snow and here again same equipment the glow the mix between the the non the loss of the anti-aliation layer in the back of this uh, Kodak Cine film basically the Cine still 400D I think most of you know it now and the old school lens um, and the precision of the exposition from the camera I think it was a really nice combination to use i've really enjoyed it um here going back to the ms optics 21 millimeter f 4.5 with the leica m8 small details of reykjavik um, basically it's not yet springtime at that time of the year um, and all the plants are kind of uh, washed out but it does for some really interesting i believe light situation and color situations I really like the details i'm really starting i'm testing obviously this new uh, lens really starting to enjoy the combination with this non full frame sensor here again very precise lens um works well um I, for those who know my style of photography those two <laughs> pictures are in line if you like stones i do um anyways um let's go back to the leica sl2 full frame with the, the 180 millimeter f 3.4 um that's a reykjavik airport on a really sunny day weather changes all the time in iceland so it's very unpredictable but you get some very different ambiances from even in one day you can have some very different ambiances uh, in terms of skies and on the right that's near that's around the airports uh, airfield of the domestic airport in Reykjavik you've got this place where when it's sunny everybody goes and goes for a small walk or a ride really cool and testing this lens um here is still the SL2 using the 21 millimeter FS optics f4.5 trying to do some low light experiments uh, one by exposing for a long time one of those weird cloudy skies night skies and on the right simply uh, from a vehicle uh, catching the lights going by um, so it was interesting i also like this lens on a full frame it's interesting on the left again same equipment only on the left a really interesting rendering of the ms optics uh, 21 millimeter 4.5 it's so flat it's a fantastic kind of cap but it's it's a cap with lots of power and a very interesting rendering um, and on the right that was the volcano uh that's the leica sl2 again but with the ttr is a 90 millimeter f 1.2 lens it's pretty heavy pretty big not that big actually it's pretty compact if you think about what's inside it's a huge piece of glass but um, incredible rendering and i was lucky to be that's the evening where the latest eruption of the volcano south of reykjavik came up from the west uh, neighborhoods and the sky was just incredible with all those clouds so the light sort of reflected on the clouds you had this really dramatic thing coming out and the reflection on the sea um, and yeah i had that lens with me so it was perfect situation to have fun with and two last pictures again the same equipment just to give you an idea of the environment so really this kind of eerie very very exceptional and impressive uh, scenery on the left you can see the, the mountains the volcanoes uh, in the background the sea in the middle and this person taking a picture with their phone all the neighborhood was out to check their eruption and on the right uh, again the skull and somebody behind looking at their eruption far away um yeah so i kind of liked that goal and and i think there was a small story between all those pictures with it um this month 
Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. If you have comments, suggestions, questions, don't hesitate. And yeah, catch you, catch you next time.